Park Street and Ferry Avenue. High risk, more in service. Matthew says, and he's speaking directly to the devs, please make it not shit. I'm tired of shit games and don't want this to be shit. I want to come back from basic combat training and play a supremely fun game. Well, thank you, my dude, for becoming my fifth patron. What's up, everybody? I hope you're having a good day because I sure am. So the first news comes from Red or Not's Discord, and it's basically on how Void is going to skirt the system that is on Steam. Those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, Steam basically takes a huge chunk of money when it comes to, you know, people selling their games on Steam. This is why a lot of developers are pushing off of the platform and trying to make their own launchers. And man, I'm getting sick and tired of launchers. But anyways, what they are planning on doing just after the trailer drops, they will open up pre-orders for a limited amount of time on their website, along with merchandise. That you can buy if you decide to get it on their website they will send you a key that you can plug into your steam and it'll show up in your library and then after that limited amount of time is up they will open up the pre-orders over on steam now i'm not an advocate for pre-orders but if you do want to help the developers i would suggest that you would get pre-orders on their website because they're going to be getting a majority of that money but that's just me that's just me just to be clear when the pre-orders open up on steam you can still pre-order through the website this was all confirmed by easy street on the discord the next news comes from me of all places. So a while ago, I had reported on a mouse pad that was briefly on Void Interactive's Instagram. Here's what I said. Moving over to Instagram, we got two new pictures uh, that actually went up during the stream that I did for the AMA where they showed off these mouse pads and I'm like, oh wow, I could really use these. It'll really replace the ones that I have right now. Damn, that mouse pad, I really need it in my life. This one kind of stuck with me because I've been meaning to replace my old mouse pad and I was hoping to do it with this game's merch. But of course the merch doesn't come out until the trailer drops and it's not out yet and it's <clears throat> One day, I noticed that Grunter and Ryro were surprisingly active on the Discord. So I just kind of uh, like offhand said, uh, can I please get that mouse pad and just left it at that. I wasn't really participating in the chat i was just kind of watching but then all of a sudden i got a message from ryro he says you want a mouse pad i was like yes give address wait really yeah for sure i'll get one off made just for you oh lo and behold it came this thing was a lot bigger than i thought it was going to be <laughs> i thought it was going to be the same size as my mouse pad but this thing basically covers up my entire desk you know this isn't the first time that i've actually received something from developers um i've gotten two free keys to give away a while back from the insurgency sandstorm crew very nice people but this is like the first time that i've actually gotten something physical and i love it you guys can't really see what it is but it's actually the picture that was on twitter should be up on the screen for you guys to see right now all right let's see how this baby looks well battlefield 4 mouse pad you served me well well, time to put in the new thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's shiny. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Void Interactive. All right, let's move on. Now we're going to be pushing over to the Reddit. The first one says, Will players be able to use a sniper rifle in this game? Maybe a certain German sniper rifle everyone loves? And the developer replies with, Only as a sniper, which can be accessed in-game via your tablet. We're considering adding it to PvP since there is a mode that might actually allow the sniper to be useful. You know, I find it very odd that a lot of people are asking for sniper rifles when this is supposed to be a close quarter combat game. So sniper rifles wouldn't be too effective in this game. At least I wouldn't think. But anyway, Anyways, let's move on. The next one says, pre-order bonus? It's a picture of a battering ram and it says, don't like guns, carry this instead. Somebody down in the comments says, here's two weekend melee suspects with this. I think what he meant to say was, we use this to melee suspects or something along those lines. And the developer adds on by saying, and SWAT. So there's friendly fire when we can use a battering ram. Oh man, that's gonna be 10 out of 10. The next one says, dear devs, please don't include this in ready or not. And there's a link to YouTube. Let's see what it looks like. It is a video of Rainbow Six Siege. Let's see how it goes, huh? What the hell? I don't even know. I don't even know this was a thing. Interesting. Hmm. How the hell does that happen? In fact, over the holidays, study the gunplay mechanics of Rainbow Six Siege and then do your best to avoid them in Ron. Thanks. And the developer replies with, Leaning is about as fast as you could do it realistically. Also, when you move the amount that you do, lean gets... 
Halved? What the hell does halved mean? According to Google, it says divide into two parts of equal or roughly equal size. Or the second definition is fit crossing timbers together by cutting out half the thickness of each? I, I don't understand. Maybe you, the viewer, knows what he's talking about because I don't know what the hell he's talking about. But I really hope that they don't have what I just saw there in the game because that would be awkward as hell. All right, let's move on. The next one says knockdown mechanic. Something I thought would be interesting would be a knockdown mechanic. By that, I mean GTA when you shoot somebody and they fall to the ground. They are not dead and still can get up. There is a mod that I have in Arma 3 that makes it so if you get shot and it hits a ballistic panel, you will fall to the ground and have to get up. Same thing happens when people get shot in real life. So I'm wondering if it's something that you guys have looked into? And the developer replies with, there won't be a knockdown system in Ron. The only time we want to arrest control away from the player is when they're being affected by less than lethal. Somebody replies to that saying, how will enemies react to being hit? Will they stumble and fight on? Or just shrug it off? And the developer applies with the flinch and then they'll continue to fight currently there are times where a round will go right through and they won't react purely so that there is a chase for the contact to re-engage the player quickly if they flinched every time they were shot it would make contact very easy so we're still working with it the same person replies to that saying would be cool to be able to down enemies with leg shots or stomach shots and have them keep fighting from the ground until incapacitated kind of like how the other guy was suggesting a bit more dynamics is always a good thing maybe in the future and the developer replies with it has been suggested by our animator that we have a down but not out state for enemies, but it depends on how it fits in with the gameplay. That would actually be pretty cool if they could have some sort of down but not out mechanic. Not only would that be cool for the enemy AI, but it would also be cool for the player. I think one way that they could incorporate this is also with a medical system because the character models have a medic kit, but as far as I know, there isn't any function for it. Maybe they're saving it for a future update? But yeah, adding the sort of system that this guy was talking about would actually be really cool. All right, let's move on. The next one says fluid physics. Are there going to be any kind of physics for blood like in Killing Floor 2 with the NVIDIA fluid physics option? I know the game might not need it since the gore isn't exactly going to be portrayed in that way, but I still wanted to know. Thank you. And the developer replies with, fluid physics aren't in currently and we probably won't implement it. I'm not even sure what fluid physics are. All right, well, moving on. The next one says, are the devs simulating actual magazines and ammo pouches? I was curious about this because in a lot of shooters, player animations show you magically pop a magazine from thin air in the hand and reload. I think it would be pretty cool in Ron if when you reload, you grab the magazine from the appropriate pouch in real time. I would love this level of detail in Ron. It's like the icing on the cake, but I understand if it can't be implemented in the game. Somebody replies to him with the portion of the first dev block where it says simulated and detailed third person inventory. In a real life simulation, each item has a place in a loader out, we wanted to ensure this level of replication, so we included detailed animations and systems which show your teammates exactly what you're doing. Magazines, grenades, and items are retrieved and returned to their specific pouches, with the pouch flaps opening and closing in synchronicity with the player's reload or draw, respectively. But then the developer replies to that saying, Note that some of the less important features listed in the dev blogs have been modified or removed as we've developed through. For example, pouch flaps opening and closing doesn't occur, since there's so much overhead for such an insignificant detail. Mags still currently spawn in pouches and can be drawn, but since players can add on more mags than are visible on the play carrier, it's likely they won't be accurate to the number of magazines being reloaded, i.e. Mag 1, Mag 2, Mag 3, Mag 4. So yeah, the devs have stated that the game is not to be a, like an exact simulation. Somebody replies to that saying, gameplay over realism, you guys are doing it right. And the developer replies with, wanting to follow an entirely realistic route to everything was a huge crush of ours around the time of our first through second dev blogs. Realism is not conducive to making a fun or memorable experience. You certainly got to take liberties. Later on in the comment, somebody says, so let's say you have four magazines in front of your pouches. If you drop all of them on the ground, will the pouches be empty? And the developer replies with, Yes. Well, that was interesting. Let's move on. The next one says, how relevant are less than lethal weapons? Is there any reason one should use a less than lethal weapon? Like a beanbag shotgun over a conventional shotgun other than obtaining a better score? I mean, I can see a hardcore player posting on YouTube, solo rescue pepper spray only, no clickbait already. However, for an average player like me, is there a tactical advantage for using LLWs or less than lethals? Especially in PVP, how are these lethal weapons going to neutralize the opposing team effectively? So there's a person in the comment section 
section who explains in detail and using Swap 4 as a reference on how you would use less than lethal weapons. But to sum it all up, sure, you could kill the guy with conventional weapons, but you would get more points incapacitating and cuffing them. Therein lies the incentive to get less than lethal. If you would like to read the full paragraph, it is on the screen for you guys to read. Let's see what the developer has to say. This is pretty much exactly it. In PvP modes, there are usually extra incentives towards arresting the other players. Sometimes there's more points. Sometimes, in the case of VIP Escort, it is required to arrest someone. Arresting requires the use of less than lethal weaponry, as they need to be stunned in order to arrest them. The same person that posted the really long comment replies to this saying, Great to hear. Now I need to know if things like this, and it's a link to one of Infralock's videos, is a very tiny YouTuber who does a lot of Swap 4 content. I'm not really sure what the guy's trying to portray here, so I'm gonna continue with the conversation. Where I'd get tased while shooting, which lowered my aim. Ah, okay. Getting the VIP killed, as well as this. And it's another link to another one of Infralock's videos, and I am really shelling him today. <laughs> and it's basically them spawn camping, it looks like. Infralock, how could you? I thought you were better than this. Guess I was wrong. Mission failed. AKA spawn camping will happen. That annoying if there's going to be stuns for every less than lethal weapon, or if it needs to be hit multiple times and hit a threshold to a stun, e.g. pepper gun. And the developer applies with, I am not sure about the first two things, but for the last thing, it will require some balancing and determining what works well. Interesting. All right, let's move on. The next one says, how has the scope of the game changed from the original November 2018 to release. So the release was put back due to the scope of the game being increased. What are we going to get now? That we wouldn't have gotten had the game never increased its scope. And the developer applies with, the scope hasn't increased really. It's around the same as it was before. Increasing the scope drastically in the middle of a development cycle is usually a bad idea. It can lead to feature creep instead of just refining, polishing and reflecting upon what you already have. A lot of ideas we have in the burner could come out later on or in a sequel. Oh, if we're lucky. Somebody replies to that saying, I love that you guys are already thinking about a sequel and the developer replies to that saying not really thinking about a sequel at all yet but the idea that we'd be able to make a sequel or anything else since we have a lot of interesting avenues to explore implies that we're doing well as a developer which is very good interesting Hmm, let's move on. The next one says, about reloading and locations? Hello, Ron Devs. I really am not good at starting out questions, but just a couple. You don't have to say anything if what I'm asking is too much. Reloading. Since this is a realistic tactical shooter, and I am very cautious about my weapon and keeping it full, and I have yet to see anything about this yet, but say you have to reload while you're in a shootout, and you're in a suppressed state, if that's a thing, which it is, will you reload slower due to the shock, or just the fact that you're under fire, versus regularly reloading where you could do it much quicker? I'm very curious about that. Locations. Very curious. Will we see all over the United States in different areas or locations or states like other games? Or is it just in one state? Feedback would be much appreciated. Love you, Void. And I will be greatly appreciative when the PS4 version comes out. Ugh, consoles. Ugh. And the developer applies with, Reloads will remain constant regardless of whether or not you are being shot at. And the game is set in a single state, which my understanding is that it's supposed to take place in California. I'm not sure if it's a single city, though. They haven't stated that. All right, moving on. The next one says, Will there be audio dynamics for the play? Player, was just re-watching the first trailer for Ron, and one of the things that really caught my interest was the sound of someone breathing through a gas mask. <sighs> Is this just something that you added to the trailer, or will it actually be implemented in the game? Having this will add to the overall immersion and realism. Also, if you get critically injured from a firefight, it would be a nice touch to hear the player breathe heavily and panic, all the while applying first aid. And the developer applies with, The breathing was just added for the trailer, but it'll definitely be in the final release. Ah uh, yes, hearing the sound of a SWAT officer breathing down my neck. Uh, 10 out of 10. Moving on, the next one says, Aiming? While you're carrying a ballistic shield, what will the aiming be like? Will you have to fully encounter yourself to get an accurate shot like an R6? Or will you just have to move your weapon closer to the ballistic glass? And if you're not aiming, will the normal fire be accurate or not? And the developer applies with, shield is held by the player in one hand. Their secondary weapon gets drawn whenever they pick it up. You can't lower the shield. It's permanently up. When you're moving around by default, the gun is still drawn, but your profile is smaller. There's currently no way to hide it, though this will likely change since we have a manual lower weapon key, which would work in this instance. Oh, cool. 
Now I can lower my weapons. That would be awesome, actually. Holding down the right mouse button lets you aim and brings the shield closer to your face so you can see more. Okay, so you never put the shield down when you're aiming, which I always thought was kind of dumb in uh, Rainbow Six Siege, but that's just me. All right, pretty cool. Let's move on. The next one says, the use of extra special equipment? Hey guys, long time reader, first time poster here. I wanted to ask the devs what they thought about the inclusion of extra special but realistic equipment. Equipment that isn't necessarily everyday SWAT, but might be for special units. Things like nine bangs. <laughs> the next one says weapon stroke flashlight epilepsy warning. Night vision goggles IR strobes. Forty millimeter under barrel less than lethal rounds? I wanted to talk about this equipment or all the things I missed, which could be pretty crazy. But in saying that, it could bring a much more intense experience to ready or not when used well. I was going to say realistic wall charges as well, but let's be real. Siege is gross. Thanks for making the game. I'm very excited for the trailer. And the developer has a very long response. Let's see what it says. We've got nine banks. They function as a distraction device with a lower effect radius than a traditional flashbang. They also last longer, so you're technically distracted contacts for a longer period of time. You can flash yourself a lot easier with nine banks, however. So if you're not using the correct equipment, you'll get blinded a lot more often. Especially if the team is throwing them into rooms and moving as they detonate. That might be where a traditional flashbang will work better for the teams using gas masks. For example, you get a single flash that isn't too unpredictable. It's likely we won't be adding strobes exactly for the reason you stated in your parentheses, and that is the epilepsy warning. We don't want to risk giving a portion of our audience seizures. Fair enough. It's also not super common for teams to use a flashlight strobe. As far as I know, they have around the same effect as a regular tactical flashlight. Night vision goggle IR strobes may be added, but currently they're not slated to be implemented before release. Friendly team members already have light strips that run along their backs to designate their color, and this shows up very well under MVG. There aren't any plans to add a 40mm underbarrel attachment to guns yet. Definitely have been approached by it before. We currently have it as a deployable. Spawns in the truck. MGL with six shots can fire stingers, flashes, CS, and baton. We also have a smaller version that players can spawn with, but it hasn't been tested yet, so whether we keep it or not is still in the air. Somebody replies to that saying, a single shot grenade launcher would be nice. I am going to assume police departments probably use a single shot due to weight and cost. Maybe size too. In general, I'd assume people who need to send six shots down range quickly are soldiers and the developer replies with, it's less about who would use it in real life and more about how much of a purpose it will serve within the game to a degree. Hmm, interesting, interesting, interesting. All right, let's move on. The next one says, physical additions? Are there plans to release physical copies of the game? I'd love to see that puppy sitting on my shelf. I understand manufacturing costs can get expensive, especially for indie developers. And realistically, I'd imagine only a limited amount would be produced since most people use Steam. This shouldn't be a problem. And the developer replies with, we might release one for PC retroactively, or possibly when we get a full release. Really depends on a lot of factors. We'd love to though. I mean, that would be pretty cool. I'd really like to have a physical copy, even though I don't have a disc drive. I don't even know how I'd put it. Nail a shelf under my wall and just have it sit right there. All right, moving on. The next one says, AI failure? This has probably been asked somewhere, but I couldn't find it in the FAQ. How possible or likely is it that the AI teammates will mess up when clearing a room or performing an action, even if you give the perfect order? And if so, what is the likelihood that it would just cause you to fail? While I want a certain round of fear to be in the game, repeatedly failing even though you do nothing wrong would be irritating. And the developer replies with, AI messing up would be incredibly frustrating. If you don't set it up the correct way, correct grenades, order follow-up actions with your team, then they'll get killed. But the onus is on the player. Yeah, I'm like really bad when it comes to commanding AI, so that's going to be interesting for me to try and do. Well, I think that about do it for today. I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.